Joining me now to discuss biased coverage in the media, Dan Gaynor, Vice President of Business and Culture of the Media Research Center. Dan, thanks so much for Skyping in today from Washington. Uh, it's a pleasure. This is an issue near and dear to my heart. Well, Dan, let's get started. Drill down this bias for us. Is it just the words the networks use to describe Hamas, or is it their overall coverage? Oh, it's their overall coverage is atrocious. What they do is they cover a free nation, the most free and democratic nation in the Middle East, as if it's the moral equivalent of the terrorist location right next door. So they will, but the, what they'll do is spin it. They will spin it by showing only Israelis attacking and Palestinians damaged or harmed. They'll call the Palestinians, as you were correctly noting, fighters and militants, and then yes, in one embarrassing CBS appearance, they call them soldiers by a factor of 13 to one to terrorists. Uh, I mean, it's outlandish, but it's even more than that. CNN had to send home one of its reporters because she referred to Israelis on Twitter as scum. NBC has Eamon Moyadeen in Gaza. Eamon used to work for uh, Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera is funded by the nation, the, you know, the royalty of Qatar, which conveniently also funds Hamas. It's fair to say Eamon's coverage of, of Gaza is all very, very positive from the, for the Hamas side. Uh, they don't talk about the real key thing. You have to hunt for this in little bits in the press. One of the things, Hamas controls the media in its area. And I mean controls as in if you do wrong, you will be harmed, arrested, or killed. And remember, they're a terrorist organization. So that means very little coverage of the fact that Hamas's headquarters is in a hospital. Hamas hides rockets and soldiers and tunnels and homes and offices and you know places where people are. One Indian journalistic uh, team discovered that Hamas was building a rocket, launching it right next to their hotel in a very heavily occupied area. Networks don't cover that. You know, Dan, you mentioned bias. you mentioned that we actually have some pictures. NDTV captured a video showing Hamas setting up rocket firing points from within civilian areas. We're going to take a look at the video right now. And as we as we show that video on screen, I, I just wonder why has the so-called mainstream media failed to give this uh, attention? and set it up in the, in the context where it, what's really going on here. Well, what they've done is they've declared sides. Long ago, media, both news and entertainment, was on Israel's side. Generally, the media liked to choose the underdog. Israel, quite frankly, won too much. It didn't, it doesn't loot enough, enough people. It's being unfair. You've actually had both the UN and one of the loons from Huffington Post call out and say that Israel should share its Iron Dome defense with its enemies. They don't talk about how every day supplies go through the Israeli lines into Gaza. They don't talk about that. It's, they don't like Israel because Israel wins too much. So that this cultural notion of a quote, fair fight or sympathy for the underdog has now creeped into media coverage, that mindset that, hey, we all need to be winners. Uh, uh, th that kind of weird equivalency has so inculcated our culture, or at least a portion of it, that now it extends to reporting, even of a conflict like this one. And then you throw in another key point, and that's the American media don't like traditional faith, of Judeo-Christian faith. So they are naturally, they've set up this scenario for all stories involving Islam, where Islam is you know, the, the underdog and they're going to support it. They're going to use it in the United States as the underdog to the David against the Christian Goliath. And in Israel, it's the David against the Jewish Goliath. They, they, they actively cover in a positive way Muslim issues, Islamic issues, because that's the side that they're on. And they don't even report that if, if the other group that they love so much, the LGBT people, lesbians, gays, bisexual, transgender, were in any other nation in the Middle East other than Israel, they'd be purged and killed. You know, as we sit here and, uh, and, and take the blinders off 
and take a look at what has happened. Now, I mentioned cultural inculcation, but is there, that almost sounds benign, does it not? Is there something more sinister at work here? Well, I mean, the, the, network, there's, the networks did not get together and say, hey, let's stick it to Israel. But what there is, is group think. And group think is very powerful in the major media. Uh, you know, they, they hang out together, journalists hang out together, they party together, they socialize together. And so their worldview is very positive to Hamas, very positive to terror, to terror groups, the various you know, Islamic terror groups, and very negative to Israel. So when Israel fights back after receiving 12,000 rockets fired into its area, and now today we've, we're seeing more, 20 more today after the end of the ceasefire, I, they don't want to cover that because Israel wins. I, it's, it is this bizarre mixture of attitudes and that the result is you never get fair coverage in the Mideast. Uh, Dan Gaynor. We thank you for your insights on media coverage. And again, we point out we're not the media, we're Newsmax, which is why we point that critical eye at times at the traditional uh, forms of media. Uh, Dan, thanks, and we look forward to having you back on again real soon. Thanks, look forward to it. All right, so you heard Dan's take. What's yours? Why don't you tweet me your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum, and America's Forum will continue after we step away for these announcements.